Hello everyone, welcome to Unfold Data Science. This is Aman here and I am a data scientist. In this video, we will understand what is the difference between Keras and PyTorch. So you must have heard of these frameworks. These are basically frameworks for deep learning. So many a times it would be coming in your mind when to use what and which of these is suitable for what kind of work. So that is what we will discuss in this video one by one. Let's start. What is Keras and what is PyTorch by definition? So Keras is not a framework that is very important to understand. Rather Keras runs on top of TensorFlow or Theano or CNTK. Now what are these things TensorFlow, Theano or CNTK? These are few things which can be compared with PyTorch because PyTorch itself is a deep learning framework. Okay. So understand guys Keras is a high level API on top of a deep learning framework. On the other hand PyTorch is a itself a deep learning framework okay just to show you let's go to my python script and if you see here i was showing you this code for implementing neural network few weeks back if you see i'm importing keras.model sequential keras.layers dense when i do this i get a message saying using tensorflow backend that means tensorflow as a deep learning framework is being used in the backend when i'm importing keras on the other hand, when you work with a PyTorch code, for example, I have some PyTorch code here, that, that message will not come. It does not mean that you are using some other framework in background. Okay, That is the difference number one. What else? If you see these two libraries or these two frameworks, I would say ease of use, right? So Keras gives high level API, hence less codes are needed to do more work. This is very important differentiator between these two. In Keras, you need to write less codes and it will do the job for you. Okay. At the same time, programmers control will be very limited in Keras. On the other hand, if it comes to PyTorch, it is little low level API. So what is the meaning of low level API? Little low level API means it itself is a framework. You are communicating with the machine at little low level which means you need to write more codes. There is no wrapper to help you. And hence, you need to write more code for doing the same task. But what is the good thing here? The good thing here is you will get more control on what you do. Let us see the examples, guys. Let us see the examples here in my Python script. Now, this code you are aware of, I, I was showing you, explaining you in last video uh, when I was explaining you this. But see here, I am importing a sequential model here from Keras, right? I am saying Keras uh, model dot add number of dimensions I am giving, activation function name I am giving. And if you notice here carefully, I am saying, please note weight and bias in initialization are done by Keras default using glow dot uniform. So weight and bias, I am nowhere writing initialize like this, do like this, do like that. I am directly going to model.compile, I am directly running the model. Okay, This is a Keras code. So if you can see here in 4 plus 2 plus 1, 6 lines, I am able to run the, train the deep learning model. Okay, Now if you see the torch code here, that is Python torch, PyTorch code, see here number of dimensions, input, output, hidden layer, generating the data, then weights I am initializing here if you see, so weight I was not initializing here which means that we need to tell more things to the machine. Okay, Machine expect us to tell more, more things to machine. Okay, So I am telling what will be my weight, what is my learning rate, these things I am not mentioning in Keras if you see, right? For t in range, so I am defining all my epochs. So what happens in an epoch, you know, the errors will be computed and in the background gradient descent will be used and weights will be optimized, right? So all these things happen here at the moment I say keras model dot fit. On the other hand, in a PyTorch code, all these things you need to define yourself. If you see loss is equal to you are calculating the loss and then updating the your weights, updating your CW1 is equal to learning rate into gradient. So this is how you update your weights. So the bottom line here is you need to write more to achieve the same thing which you can achieve by writing less in keras. But the good thing is you have more control on the code. Now let us come back to PPT. What are the other differences, right? So if you see the third slide I have put here, when to use what? I am sure you would be getting some idea now about this. So Keras is suitable for you if you are starting your deep learning journey. 
you want to build some quick prototypes, you want to have a feel of how deep learning models are deployed, you want to you know quickly get and go with your data. You have a small data set, you want to run a model, deploy it, see how things are working, then Keras is very good option for you. When is PyTorch a good option for you? So PyTorch is a very gives you gives stability to your model. So when you want to build a scalable solution, you want to build a fast solution, a, a solution which trains itself fast, a flexible solution which can be taken from one platform to other platform, a solution which is easy to debug. So if you see in Keras, there is, there is not many options for the programmer, but in TensorFlow, uh, in PyTorch, you can debug your solution, you can do many things at the code level. So to keep it at high level, for small prototype, small data, do things quickly Keras. If you want an industry level, you know, scalable solution, then PyTorch, okay. Community support, another important criteria to choose from the available packages. So if you can see this chart, this I have taken from the Twitter, so I have given the courtesy to this link, right. So if you can see this line, this purple line going up is the TensorFlow line. So TensorFlow is little old also as compared to PyTorch and hence it is you know always so it tells you how many times a particular word was mentioned in the research papers basically okay so tensorflow is mentioned many times that is you know obvious as well but if you see this line here right this is the pytorch line so pytorch from the time it has come like in 2016 towards the end of that it started getting momentum and then 2017 here you see it is going up like crazy so the reason for that is lot of people are inclined towards PyTorch now. They want to build their application in Py PyTorch. The reasons are the same which I gave in the previous slides, okay. And you will find lot of interesting use cases in PyTorch, okay. So what is the summary of what we have discussed till now? At high level I have put all those points that we discussed. So Keras is concise and simpler, right less do more kind of thing. PyTorch is flexible and it gives you deeper understanding of your models, right? In Keras, you will find lot of tutorials and reusable code on internet. That's one good thing. In PyTorch, community support is very huge because lot of people are, as I told, inclined towards PyTorch now. And active development is going on as well, which means the features are getting upgraded and all those things. So in Keras, not much need an option of debugging. You cannot debug your code beyond a limit in Keras, okay? Because you do not have control on the code. But on the PyTorch, you have a better debugging capabilities. More deployment options, which means you can, you can carry your code from one platform to other platform using Docker or many other options in Keras. On the other hand, in PyTorch, since it is a low-level API, Exporting, deploying is little trickier. It will need little expertise, okay? And in Keras, training speed is lower and it is suitable for relatively small data, as I told in the beginning. So if you give 100 rows to Keras and 100 rows to PyTorch, PyTorch will train your data faster, okay? So higher training speed, even with large data set, PyTorch is good in that aspect. So when to use what? Use Keras if not much interested in nitty gritty details of deep learning, okay? So if you do not want to know everything about internal mathematics of deep learning, you want to run something very fast, then Keras is a good option for you. But if you want to understand what is the mathematics behind an epoch, how in various ways we can train the model, how we can use the various optimizers, how we can take the various weight initializations, if you want to go at that level, then PyTorch is a better option for you. So I'm sure you would have understood what are the differences between Keras and PyTorch and through this video I wanted to give you a high level understanding of these two frameworks to say so that you know you have in your mind what are these things and when to use what. If you have any doubts write me in comment. I will see you all in the next video with another interesting topic. Till then all of you stay safe and take care.